everybody is uh, challenged by the fact that Jesus changed my life. This is what Hamas is doing. You know, we cannot say it's like, okay, Palestinians. No, the, the children of Gaza are helpless. You know, Hamas store missiles at schools, at hospitals, at mosques, and lunch rallies, you know, with their homemade, kitchen made missiles, you know, among thousands, hundreds of thousands of civilians, you know. What's that? You know, your father was a founding member of Hamas and you were groomed to take a leadership position. Eventually, you converted to Christianity, rejected their political and military objectives. Why did you do that? Well, for the simple uh, reasons that we see uh, right now in, uh, in, in Gaza, that Hamas does not care about the lives of uh, uh, Palestinians, does not care about the lives of Israelis or Americans. Mm -hmm. They don't care about their own lives. Uh, they consider uh, dying for the sake of uh, their ideology. I'll ask you the same question I asked my last guest. Can you coexist with someone whose mission is to is your destruction? Well, Hamas is not seeking coexistence and uh, uh, compromise. Hamas is seeking uh, conquest and uh, taking over. And by the way, Israel, the destruction of the state of Israel is not Hamas' uh, final destination. Mm -hmm. Hamas' final destination is uh, building the Islamic Khilafah which means uh, an Islamic state on the rubble of every uh, other civilization. Th these are the ultimate goals of the movement. The son of Hamas co-founder had a radical encounter with Jesus Christ. His testimony should encourage Christians to pray for Muslims and Jews in Israel, Palestine, and around the world. Actually, my goal was, uh, when I agreed to work with Israeli intelligence, is to uh, uh, be a double agent, uh, to work for Hamas. Uh, against Israel. Um, now, when I was transferred to prison and I witnessed Hamas uh, brutality, <clears throat> excuse me, and I saw that they were killing our own people, I started to ask uh, questions about the real nature of my father's organization. While war rages between Israel and Hamas, and while we see nothing but death and destruction, we want to remind everyone that Jesus is the only hope for humanity. For Christians, preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the lost and dying world should remain our number one priority. The gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to save and redeem sinners, and no one is beyond redemption. Within days of us broadcasting that interview, it spread across the internet like wildfire. Days after that, Al-Qaeda itself stepped up in the absence of Hamas making any comment, criticized Hamas for allowing him to get away from the organization, and then concluded their internet statement by quoting the words of the Prophet Muhammad, chilling words. They said, whoever changes his religion, kill him. That being a reference to the fact that Mos Habasan not only has left Hamas, but has now turned his back on Islam and converted to Christianity. I love Jesus immediately. Why? Love your enemy. That was the one that moved me from like deep and changed my life forever. I've been suffering for a long time. It's like my medicine became, it's not a drug. It's not uh, given, it's not like Quran. To be honest with you, uh, being killed is not uh, the worst uh, thing can happen to me. But if my soul is dead, if I, I feel the responsibility and I don't uh, say a, a word of truth, I will die every day. The story of the son of the Hamas co-founder's radical change proves that no one is beyond redemption. In this video, Mr. Youssef narrated his journey to Christianity. While he was still a Muslim, he began to read the Bible and listen to sermons about the teachings of Jesus Christ. The more he heard the gospel, the more Jesus transformed his heart. So th this type, of, uh, when I saw in Jesus Christ how hard he was on people with self-righteousness, it uh, made also perfect uh, sense to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw Jesus Christ uh, liberating uh, people from religion and uh, fulfilling uh, religion with his uh, grace, mm -hmm. uh, that also touched, uh, touched my heart. This is what uh, Muslims have been missing. In fact, uh, from the early beginning, I, um, I, had, I adopted Jesus Christ's uh, teachings and standards in my life. And uh, I absolutely felt uh, that this is the way that I want to go in my life. Um, now, uh, the, um, so I, 
I obeyed Jesus Christ more than I obeyed the, the God of uh, Islam. God was not done with Mosab yet. God revealed the truth to him. It was time for Mosab to decide whether to abandon Islam and follow Jesus Christ because no one can serve two masters at the same time. I uh, was adopting Jesus Christ in my life and his teachings above the teachings of uh, the God of uh, the Quran. So I, I couldn't live those two lives. I had to make like which way? Is it Christianity or Islam? It cannot be uh, both at the same time. So uh, to me, that was uh, uh, shocking and uh, it was dangerous because of the consequences. Mm -hmm. If what this man is saying on the TV is true, um, uh, but I was uh, happy because this way at least I can be at peace in my heart that I am following the right uh, path. And this is how I choose, I made my final decision to adopt Jesus Christ as my God and Savior and uh, uh, renounce uh, the God of Islam totally uh, from my life. I was baptized in the Mediterranean uh, Sea in the uh, uh, Tel Aviv area. In fact, uh, not many uh, um, uh, interviews that we got the chance of talking about Jesus. In, in fact, it seems that nobody wants uh, to hear uh, this, uh, this part because uh, um, everybody is uh, challenged by the fact that Jesus changed my life. Mm -hmm. uh, seculars don't want to hear that. Uh, Muslims don't want to hear that. Atheists don't want to hear that. Nobody wants to hear this because uh, simply uh, they have uh, to face the consequences. If this is right, and if Jesus Christ is real and he's working through uh, people's hearts, this means that they, they want to uh, follow those steps or at least give him the credit yeah. for the change. Indeed, Jesus deserves all credit and glory. No one is too lost to be saved, and no sin is too great that Jesus can't forgive. As you might have expected, after renouncing Hamas and his religion and becoming a Christian, Mossab was ostracized by his own people, and his father disowned him. Since Yusuf's book was published, his father, Sheikh Hassan Yusuf, has publicly disowned his son. I uh, want to ask you, of course, to pray for me and pray for my family. They were under lots of pressure. The last time I talked to my dad, he told me, I, told, I asked him to disown me, because I know how difficult this is for them. And he told me this is not an option. I know their hearts. They're good people. But unfortunately, their God doesn't have a minimum amount of humanity. He unskin their humanity. He wants them to be beasts. We urge Christians to pray for Mosab that his faith in Jesus remains strong despite the persecution he continues to endure. Unquestionably, Mosab Hassan Youssef is one brave man. He risks everything, including his life, to challenge the status quo, and he has been on a long journey to rid himself of the indoctrination that the Jews are the enemy that must be uprooted. That journey, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has led him to love the Jews and not hate them, and to accept that they have the right to exist as a nation. When I was conditioned in my society to hate Israel as the uh, uh, ultimate enemy of the Palestinian people, an enemy that we blamed everything on, and we still blame, uh, I saw Israel as the devil. But uh, when you go on a uh, journey and you have direct observation and you have experience with what so-called enemy, uh, your truth is going to be superior because it's first-hand experience. It's not coming from the mullah, from the imam, from the sheikhs. Uh, it's not coming from the politician. Actually, the ones who uh, uh, propagate and sell the idea that Israel is your enemy. And little by little, uh, I start to learn that uh, Israel is not our enemy. You know, Israel is just another uh, uh, nation, uh, people, children, women, elders. Uh, and uh, uh, they're seeking life. They're not seeking death. And uh, basically, they have the birthright uh, to be in that place, as I had the birthright to be in that place. And uh, the idea 
uh, to uproot a nation and throw them in the sea, children, women, human beings, uh, and kill them because they are different, or because, you know, the uh, politicians say they don't belong here, or the uh, uh, mullah or the uh, religious uh, authorities say uh, this is an Islamic land, uh, or this land belongs to Allah, not to the Jews. You know, this is uh, the human delusion, and this is a lie. Indeed, this is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has the power to transform a dark and hardened heart. That is all the more reason for Christians to fearlessly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to our Jewish and Muslim friends. Do we really believe that the gospel is our greatest need? Do we really believe that it's the church's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our nation's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our world's greatest need? Do we really believe that? Or are we waiting for someone to ride in on a white horse who's not named Jesus? If we believe this, we will manifest that belief by preaching this gospel in which we have confidence. In this video, we made it clear that war is never a solution to a lasting peace. However, as Hamas attacked innocent people in Israel, including little children, Israel was forced to defend itself. First of all, war is not uh, a beautiful thing. And uh, if you uh, look at the bigger picture, you'll see that Israel was uh, forced for this type of war. Hamas dragged Israel to this war and used uh, uh, the Palestinian children and innocent civilians as a uh, shield. Um, I cannot call it uh, brutality because Israel is a democratic country. Uh, Israel is not a dictatorship and it's not an ideological uh, terrorist uh, organization. Uh, there are Muslims, there are Christians, there are Arabs who live in the state of Israel and all of them serve the Israeli constitution. What happened in Gaza, uh, in my uh, opinion, was uh, very sad. But uh, unfortunately, there is no beautiful uh, war. And uh, Hamas need to think a thousand times next time before they launch one missile against uh, Israel. Hamas has accused Israel of oppressing Palestinians, but brutally attacking innocent Israeli civilians does not and will never further the cause of the Palestinians. Dr. Bassem Naim, Hamas's head of political and international relations, answer me this first of all. How does murdering hundreds of women and children and massacring young people at a music festival and kidnapping innocent civilians further the cause of the Palestinians. But you, you, so you have no sense of that feeling that so many Palestinians talk about, about being surrounded, about feeling like they're in a prison camp, completely outgunned, outnumbered, brutalized by Israeli drones in the air and bombs coming over the, over the border. I mean, you, you have no more empathy for that. That's all gone, because you were once on that side. No, that's not true. Um, actually, I understand the reality very well. I grew up uh, in the Palestinian territories and understand the struggle. I think uh, the problem is that Hamas is trying to smuggle weapons on a daily basis, and the siege is a result of this, is, this problem. I think Hamas need to give up their arms. They need to give up their attempt to get uh, missiles and, uh, uh, and weapons. And uh, at that point, I think Israel has no problem with helping the Palestinians. Israel has been helping the Palestinian education, the uh, Palestinian uh, health uh, systems uh, for many years. And uh, uh, I, I believe uh, that Israel will not ignore the, its responsibility towards the Palestinians. But in the meantime, we need to uh, Hamas to step down and to be uh, disarmed. Ultimately, the Arab world will not experience lasting peace until the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, reigns in that region. Israel is predominantly Jewish. According to the U.S. Department of State, only 1.9% of the population are Christians. Roughly 1% of Palestinians are Christians, and 99% are Muslims. 
Consequently, Christians should pray for the people of these two countries to know Jesus and pray for the current war to end. As Mossab Hassan Youssef pointed out, Hamas needs to lay down its arms, which could help end the present war. In this video, Youssef called out the Palestinian leaders for mistreating their people. As you might have expected, people were stunned and eyes rolled. I take the floor on behalf of the UN Watch. My name is Mus'ab Hassan Youssef. I grew up in Ramallah as a member of Hamas. I address the words to the Palestinian Authority, which claims to be the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. I ask, where does your leg legitimacy come from? The Palestinian people did not elect you, and they did not appoint you to represent them. You are self-appointed. Your accountability is not to your own people. This is evidenced by your own total violation for their human rights. In fact, the Palestinian individual and their human development is the least of your concerns. You kidnap Palestinian students from campus and torture them in your jails. You torture your political rivals. The suffering of the Palestinian people is the outcome of your selfish political interest. You are the greatest enemy of the Palestinian people. If Israel did not exist, you would have no one to, to blame. Take responsibility for the outcome of your own actions. You fan the flames of conflict to maintain your abusive power. Finally, you use this platform to mislead the international community, to mislead the Palestinian society, to believe that Israel is responsible for the problem you create. Thank you. For believers in Jesus Christ, our response to the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas must differ from that of the secular world. We must mourn the deaths of men and women, including children, for whom Christ died and who are caught in the crossfire. We must not encourage violence or vengeance, for vengeance belongs to God. Instead, we should fervently pray that this war ends. But more importantly, we should pray for 99% of Palestinians and 98% of Jews who don't know Jesus Christ. You know, what, what I tell Israelis and Palestinians, that we give you this free gift. The gift of love, forgiveness. Um, if you accept it, it's, it will change your lives. If you can't love your enemies, this is the real challenge, not to kill your enemies, not to kill each other. Killing your enemy and taking revenge from, from uh, uh, your enemy is an easy thing to do. But loving your enemy is the real challenge. And this is the challenge that I give them today. I've, I could do it, and it worked in my life, it changed my life to the better. Yes, I'm paying a high price today of losing my family, but at least I didn't lose myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I tell them, this is the challenge. Now, those are principles coming from Christianity. And those are the principles, the standards of Jesus Christ. So at, I invite them to accept Him as a Lord and a Savior, as, as their God. If Jesus Christ becomes their highest authority, their lives, their hearts, their societies, their families, everything will change to better. Let us continue to pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ will penetrate the hearts of unbelievers in Israel and Palestine, and that they will repent of their sins and believe the gospel to be saved, just as God saved Mossab Hassan Youssef. Uh, and who gets the credit is uh, Jesus Christ. Without his teachings, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, I owe Jesus Christ everything. Uh, I owe him my life. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you.